say good morning everybody or afternoon or good day wherever you are i'm in houston texas my name is olga bochareva i am emotional intelligence coach for entrepreneurs and in this video this is part three of the three-part video on how to tap or emotional decluttering i will be talking about um a second way of tapping which is creating a peace list how to make a peace list and how to work through that so in the first two videos you learn about what is tapping and uh, how it can help you in your life so we talked about different areas or aspects that you can improve with tapping and the second video we talked about how to tap in the moment and about the actual tapping process so today we'll talk about how to address deeper roots of what is going on in your life how to go to the next level and this is subconscious so you guys heard so many things about subconscious probably that over 95% of our decisions are made there, which is absolute truth, and only about 5%, which is your conscious mind that drive the bus. So the biggest question is, how do we access all that information that's been recorded there, and how do we start making deep, meaningful changes? So there's this amazing quote by Robert G. Smith, and it goes somehow like that. Memories buried alive never die. They come back in a different pair of shoes, usually bigger and scarier ones. So memories is the key. Memories are the key to your transformations. In this video, I'll talk about how to make a peace list and how to work with those memories to make the changes that go beyond just slapping the band-aid or running away or turning away or just tapping in a moment, which all of that works. But this work is really, really special because it goes to the core, to the root of the issue and helps you make the change. All right, so if you are one of my prior clients, you'll be getting an um, email with me with the list of how to organize your memories and how to write them down. If not, you can still totally do it on your own and I'll walk you through that right now. So essentially, whatever issue you're facing right now, Start by asking yourself, have I ever felt like this before? So if you are going through some anger issues, or maybe you get in a car and you start getting rages all of a sudden, and then you have a hard time controlling your feelings, ask yourself, when did I feel like that before? Write down your first memory or and your worst memory of that. And it could apply to just about any issue you're facing right now that you want to handle with tapping. The first time and the worst time. Also ask yourself, have I ever felt like that before? What other deep emotional trauma or issues or things happened to you in the past that creating all of this? So um, there's two ways to look at it and you'll know which way to go because you feel whatever is right. One is called peace list. Peace list essentially is the list of all the bad things ever happened with you in life. There could be uh, losses, there could be personal tragedies, divorces, maybe some dramas happened in the past with your parents when you were childhood, anything happened in the school, uh, illnesses, um, anything and everything else that dramatically impacted you at that time. Here's something to keep in mind. If you don't think it's a big deal, but you remember feeling clearly bad about it, write this down. There's two things I want you to mention about this. Number one, the name of the memory. For example, I had a memory that called loud music. And as I was like four or five year old, my dad was playing loud music. I got scared, I got my toys, I hide them because it was so loud, I get me scared. So I would please that memory and it says loud music, I would rate how strong I feel about this now. So at the time I was tapping, it was pretty strong, seven or eight, on a scale from zero to 10, where zero, not at all, 10, very strong. And the last thing that you want to write down is how do you feel after it? Because you're going to tap on it, or we're going to tap on this together, depending on where you are. And then it's going to change. All of those emotional triggers are going to change. Also, at least three emotions that connected with this. So in my case, it was fear, feeling not safe, and um, yeah, those was the big two that I remember as a key to experiencing. I mean, right now it's not a big deal. Now, so this is the peace list. And it really, you know, could be long, could be short. One thing I recommend you when you make a peace list is don't um, sit down and write for too long. Put like a timer for five, 10 minutes and take breaks because bringing all of that could re-traumatize you. So I wanna be very, very clear um, 
in, in this particular piece, because our goal is not to re-traumatize you, our goal is to help you heal, you know, as, as easily as possible. So you, when you make this piece, if you start feeling very strong emotional intensity, stop and go into a good, happy memory, or just get distracted, go full boundary, go walk around outside, do something non logistic and then go back and continue writing. If you feel it's too much for you, just don't do it. Just start tapping and releasing it as you go. If you feel like you can handle it, just write the titles. Just write the titles of the memory. Don't go through you know, the whole pictures and, and, and um, everything that's happening right now because obviously you're going to get you know, stressed. After you made this list, you can take one memory at a time and start tapping. Again, if you're working with me, I will walk you through the process. I'll show you how to do and we'll use a specific memory of yours to show how it works. Now, if you're doing it yourself, here's what you need to do. When you step into the memory, notice how you know that it's still alive. Remember I said, never buried alive, never die? Yeah, because if it's there, it will manifest itself in one shape, way, or form. It's kind of like, have you ever had this feeling like you were dating somebody and you had a good time and then you broke up and you had a song that you like, right? And then you hear that song again if you had a bad breakup or you never have healed that memory. This song is playing and you feel bad. It's just like that because our subconscious will connect all the right dots and it will start replaying it to you in all the unexpected times. Right? You never know when you hear that song and next thing you know, you feel like crap, right? you feel bad. So we don't want that. We don't want the external circumstances con con controlling us. What we do want is the uh, remote control to our own happiness. The one not people control us, but we are in charge and we can consciously choose. And we can still experience those feelings. It's just they don't drag us down, you know. So um, as you're tapping on the memory, there are a few things I want you to do. I want you to step in the memory and notice how you know. I want you to look at the people in the memory. I want you to notice the feelings that you have, sensations, pictures, smells, maybe tastes, and start tapping on them. I'm talking about how to tap in video number two. If not, you can just find it on YouTube. And then basically what you do, you tap between your eyes and you say, this memory or this picture or this feeling, whatever feeling it is, and you say, it's safe to let it go, just let it go, letting it go. It's safe to release it, let it go. And grab your wrist, breathe in, breathe out. In 90% cases that I work with people and you know what I've learned and what I experienced myself, it will start changing very fast. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it takes longer. So another thing that I like quote um, Mr. Robert Smith on is, tap until it goes away or until you pass out because if you pass out, the next morning is gonna be a better day. So keep on tapping, it's gonna get better. Stay persistent on it. As you work on the memory, you wanna to get to the point to where it's a very low intensity. So as you address, address different aspects, pictures, noises, smells, sensations, and you tap it out, at some point, you will feel, you know, very neutral about this memory. Almost like, you know, I went to the grocery store, I bought some milk, I came back, and I feel better. This is fantastic because then you don't have this internal resource that's dragging you down, that helping you feel bad, right? And it's just, you know, essentially damaging your present and future. So when you've done that, flip it to the good memory, switch it to the positive one. And then, you know, people ask me a lot of questions about sleeping memories because honestly, I was a little bit iffy about that myself. Like, that's my memory. How can you sleep? It, it happened, you know? It really did happen. So what I like to say is it did happen, but it's not happening. It's not happening right now. It will never happen again. So you can use this memory to torture yourself and replay it over and over in your mind and feel bad about it, or you can say, it's done, it's gone, the past is over, and I'm ready to change it on a very practical level, you know, make peace with this on a deep internal level. Now, all of this is in our head. The only true, the only real is right now. Right now is real, the rest of it is not real, it doesn't exist. The future doesn't exist. So right now, I'm sitting here and I'm talking to you on the YouTube or either way you're watching me, guys. The rest of it is not true, doesn't exist. So what you can do with this knowledge is you can make some really awesome changes. You can use your imagination to change that memory and see it differently, perceive it differently. You know, Albert Einstein said that your 
imagination is more powerful than knowledge. Imagination is more powerful than knowledge. So use your imagination to make these changes. So one, there's a couple of ways that I train my clients to do this. One is essentially when you close your eyes, you step into this memory, rewrite it, rewrite it completely. See it differently, change the characters, change the sound, change the colors, put your favorite colors in it, put your favorite smells in it. It's amazing, guys. If you try it, I can guarantee you it's going to be an amazing process. So, so do this. Change the colors, change the um, people in it. Another way to change it is sometimes as you tap it, positive aspects of the memory will come up. For example, I was tapping with a, with a mom, and she had this memory when her kid was horrible, misbehaving, had tantrums, run around like crazy, screaming and just not listening. And every time she think about it, she would get stressed out. So what we did is after we tapped it out, she looked in the mirror and said, wait a minute, all what I see is a healthy kid. I see a healthy kid running around. And she actually felt good about that same memory. Now, the memory didn't change, right? The way how she felt about it. So a lot of things in her relationship with her son started also transforming. So use this process. If you have any questions, you can find me on Facebook and pop in and ask or uh, shoot me an email. You can find me at www.mastertheartofchange.com. Keep on tapping. Catch you in the next one.